Hello everyone and welcome back to Lakanksha. And this week we have plenty to discuss from big derbies to relegation battles to referee controversies. You know, we're here. It's La Liga. And we're going to start with the biggest game of the weekend, which is Athletic Bilbao versus Real Sociedad in the Bass Derby. And it did somewhat live up to expectations in the second half, didn't it? And yeah, that was a good game overall. You know, Athletic, they really came to the party and and showed what they could do. And, you know, congratulations to Matthew Williams for the fantastic performance. And that's like four goals he scored in three straight games, which is... It's yeah, weird. I'm like, Inaki, Inaki Williams is consistent now. Okay. Okay. I got, you know, it's like, um, it's a good thing to see. Like, maybe he's finally finding the shooting boots. Or maybe yeah. it's just a, another purple patch, but, you know, it's still good to see. Yeah, it's very good to see because that puts Athletic very, not, not only close to, um, not only does it consolidate the position of seventh, but it also makes them close to Rob Betis and Villarreal, or on top of them, Russell's that are a bit far away. But there was, there was some controversy in this game in with the first goal because there is in some pictures where it does touch Inaki in the arm, but it's a goal nonetheless, and he took it really well. He finished it, the second one, beautifully, although you could question Romero. He gets beaten in that near post so many times. Yeah, the second goal he should have done. Ramirez should have done better. I mean, he did well to deny, to like save the first two shots from both Williams brothers in the game, but then a second goal was not not something he would want to look at again. And then the first one, the realize I think it's like one of those things where pictures kind of tell a lie because I feel the logical thing that happened is the ball. Like the ball is literally behind his arm. So unless you have the perfect optimal angle, you can't tell whether it touched it or not. Because for all we know, they could be like a meter apart if you get a millimeter apart, rather, if you get it. Yeah. And Ross is that fans were also annoyed about a certain handball just before, I think it was in the second half where. Yeah, R- Marino shot again that these handles are his body. I don't know what he wants. <laughs> Yeah, there, there are lots of these sort of decisions in La Liga this week, so we'll get on. Yeah, but that, that one is, there's no controversy in that one. That one is not harmful. Anyone who thinks that's handball, I'm sorry to say, you're, you're deluded. <laughs> yeah, it has come from Ross is that fan page, so that's... <laughs> but with Ross is that, it's, they, they haven't really been good this year. Like, I remember in the first derby where it was somewhat, it was somewhat like their coming of age, like you had Kubo playing a really great game. Mm-hmm. Right, it was amazing. It's the atmosphere at Anueta was electric or La Real Arena, whatever it's called these days. And you felt this team could do something special. But now, fast forward to this year at the end, you somewhat got a decapitated Real Sociedad, I feel. Yeah, and um, I, I just wanted to, you, had to, you talked about Bertman as I was like, I just checked. Did he play in this game? I found out he did, but it was hooked at <laughs> yeah. halftime. I, I, the first whole first half, Chris has said had zero shots. I believe that was it. I, I, I don't want to sound like I'm picking on anybody, but obviously, uh, Sabal is not. He's not one hundred percent yet. He had that awful injury, so him playing is not really him playing. As a striker, which is not his position, but you got what I'm saying. A lot yeah, of things yeah. aren't ideal yeah. for him right now. And do you think maybe Imanol has messed up the dynamic of the team with bringing him in? Yeah, possibly. Possibly. You had a, you had a good moment moment with Torloff and Bryce and Kubo and everything was going on well in that in those games. And ever since it's come in, it seems like that dynamic of the way the formation they have to play without him it's just yeah. gone out of the window. Yeah. Yeah, and before anyone says, but Oscar, you're being reactionary. I'm going to be fair. Even if you play sore lot, look, look at what he missed in this game. Like yeah. the problem is bigger than one player. Yeah. So to be fair, it's not it's not like Oya Salvo came in and said, Hey Sorlot, I'm going to take away a bit to score goals consistently. Mm-hmm. 
the ability to score goals consistently has never been there. Yeah. Even like in the second half, right? Um, Emmanuel like brought in like more pure wingers in them. Um, Bernie oh. Chair first off, and then Cho later. Who both of them had good impacts on Russo Cell's attack. Yeah, the I issue so. is that yeah, the issue is that Bernie Chair had a one on one with the goalkeeper and blazed it over the post. Yeah, and that, that's uh, a thing then, because at that at that point it could have been two one, maybe they. It could have been two one, and then I think there was a good enough extra time before that. Sorlot blazed one over the bar like usual, and like this team, if only they had a good strike. <laughs> They, they do be, have a good striker though, but he is he is injured. A so. good striker that's fit yeah. <laughs> and available. True, yeah. The thing is that Sadik is not someone who gets injured a lot, so like I, I, it's just weird what's happening. Is it a real curse? I think. <laughs> yeah, it's real curse. Like even Carlos Fernandez, like he, I, he Fernandez, he got injured. Yeah, got injured. Yeah. Um, who else? Yeah, Mendy. Um, yeah, Mendy has had a good season, but. Maybe that's also something that may be affecting them a bit because when he has played this season, he has shown like he was re- a really, really good player that the team has been missing with all of his injuries. But... Yeah, he's really shown that. I'm going to go back to Athletic, right? Well, we're seeing Iniesta Williams in fine form. He's scoring goals, obviously. He might hit double digits, which is close to being a miracle. But <laughs> the one question I have is, what does Ernesto Valverde have against Ike Munai? Does Ike Munai I have... don't know, man. Like, that's so strange. What did he... Because he I... was so essential when Athletic were playing really yeah. well at the start of the season. Ever like, since, it's... He has been... a hard on for Danny Garcia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Danny Garcia is like you know, a purely destructive player. And you know me. I like, I like aesthetic stuff. On yeah. the field, football field, like anything rough and tough is like usually, usually something that makes me want to cry. But yeah. you know, in Danny Garcia, I mean, I guess you want to play a more defensive system against Russia. That is completely understandable. But you have too many attacks. We don't even talk about Berenger, you know? yeah. <laughs> but I no, guess no. Berenger, Berenger is a case that um, he doesn't. Really play Inaki as in, and to be fair, Inaki has actually been playing on the right and scoring goals, so maybe, maybe that's his real position all along. Who knew? <laughs> yeah, yeah, who knew? Well, the problems are there for Real Sociedad to see, but they're even worse at Valencia, where Valencia on Sunday night last night they got, I won't say they got taken apart, but they lost a very vital game. Uh, it's not, it's not taken apart because. I mean, for what it's worth, and it's worth very, very little to you. I thought Valencia was the better team. I don't know. That's what, that, and here's why I said for what it's worth. Neither team were really good. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. The thing so, is, severe, severe away from home are a notoriously very shaky team. Uh, their heroes said Old Trafford aside. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. They, like away, that's why I saw this game going into this game. This was a must win game. It was a must win game. It's a must win game. Like every, we'll talk about Vincent's upcoming games later. But at this point, every game against a direct competitor is a must win game, or you yeah. risk getting cut adrift. Sure, but sure. Because like, who, it, it who won the first? Sorry, my bad. Who won the first game this season between the two of them? It, it was a tie between Valencia and Sevilla. Okay, so Sevilla the final the game, advantage. the final moment of the game. Valencia had a, an opportunity to win it in a penalty, but that I am missed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and the reason why this was important is because you already lose San Maria last week. You lose the headset. You're playing against a Sevilla team that's somewhat tired from the Europa League, although they did rest a lot of players against Manchester United in the first leg. And this is a team that notoriously is not a good team away from home. You have to win it. And it, it did start very well for Valencia. They did. I felt a little more very better side in the first half, but in the, the lack of quality showed. Yeah, that, 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 Bani, that, that. I don't know what he's doing. Um, since he came back from injury, he's not been the same player. But granted, he's not playing the same coach. The lineup was a bit weird and playing to. Why is Sam doing an that? <laughs> I have no idea. Like when he came on, you can clearly see his guys 
the only player in the attack besides Cliver that has an idea. Yeah. <laughs> that takes risks, you know, that makes so good decisions compared to the rest of the team. Yeah, and I don't know what's happened to Musa too. It's just I feel this team was built instead of the work that people wanted. Mm-hmm. And having a manager like Paraha who's inexperienced mm-hmm. and it's so radically different from the proposal that Capito presented. It's sort of making the players a bit confused. Mm-hmm. And I know Borderlass is an extreme version of what Gatuso was. But I do think he might have the same effect that Mendele Bazza had in Sevilla, where he's making everything simple for Sevilla. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do feel Valencia needs somewhat of that, and they need to have a more positive approach, approach to games. Yeah. Because I do feel they really need it because this is a sucker punch because you lose that side advantage against mm. um against Almeria to now against Sevilla in the and then yeah you have yeah. El, you have El Chain next which if you guys can't win that then <laughs> maybe yeah. it's, I just start thinking a lot I can't think of any meetable second that's you know, off the top of my head the only <laughs> ones I can that are coming to mind are either in the title race or about to get relegated but I digress. Yeah. After Elche, there's um, Real it's Valladolid yeah. at home. Must win. Cardiz away. Cardiz are cockroaches. So. Yeah. The, the, yeah. the fact that Real Valladolid are actually doing all right for themselves now, and the fact that Cardiz are so bloody resilient, I, I'm really worried for Valencia. I can't lie. Yeah, and there were, there were like protests at the end of the game and, and as, as well concerning the owner. Uh, but there was also some controversy on the pitch because I feel the first goal shouldn't be good because Badi does foul. Um, you yeah, and, so. and I don't know what went in the head of Zetero Grande, but how do you get that bar or the bar? How do you see that and not take off the goal? How does this look for you, man? I don't understand you, it. You see. But there was there was also controversy after that because when Sevilla body scored, Sevilla went one 0 up. There was a handball controversy. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that was a penalty though. Yeah, I, I, I agree that was not a penalty because it comes off Fernando's body first. Respect yeah. to, respect to. I think on if so I think that's probably the same thing reason why they let the Iñaki Williams first goal stand. If it came off any part of his body, it was probably his back. Yeah. Yeah, and, and let's say it didn't come off his body. It's he, he gets hit Pre- with the ball so it's, close. It's, it's like Castellet will just place it there. It's like I, yeah. I hope I get it healthy. Yeah, but after that, Suso scores, and then there's another penalty shout later on where Marcal goes through Marcus Andre, and I think Marcus Andre dies there. So I'm, I, I, I'm yeah. I, don't, I don't I don't really remember that that part. I somehow yeah. missed. I, I was I somehow missed that one, but yeah, yeah. I, like I felt like. Everything that could have gone wrong for Valencia went wrong, yeah. and then even the Moriba red. I don't, that's not a red, man. Like, no, these referees, these referees are just it's as if if they don't pull out the cards, they're going to <laughs> fall down and go. I, I don't get it. Yeah, it. It's almost as if there there's a target for the amount of red cards a certain referee has to give out, <laughs> and they're all competing against each other. Uh, and yeah, we, we can we can talk about the referees. I I'm, I'm gonna wait till later till after the next matchup, but we'll talk about them later. There's something that's happening with the refs and and the league and. Very oh, interesting. But uh, let's go to the Sevilla point of view, right? This. Mm-hmm. Is a massive win for them because mm-hmm. I feel after this win, they're pretty much safe in my opinion. In, in this particular season, can can we say anyone is? <laughs> well, the I think at this point with eight points, they can start relaxing a little bit. Yeah, I they on on top of having a miraculous result at Old Trafford. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> little old Sevilla. Do what the top boys in La Liga couldn't do. <laughs> yeah, they're a bit of a bogey team for you know. It's a, it's a, yeah, yeah, they bogey team, but it's it's just a sick joke. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess at this point, now that you have a good result, just pour everything into Thursday and you know hope for the best. Like, 
and even if they do somehow get a result, at Manchester United, it must be said, coming to this game with a lot of disadvantages. You know, some important defenders are injured. Maguire is going to play. <laughs> <laughs> As long as as long as they keep Nyanz away from the pitch and Marcal's calves don't tear apart, then I think Sevilla have a chance. Yeah. And that that's... said that said, I don't think they'll they'll, they'll beat whoever they face in the semi final. <laughs> or even win the whole team, but you know, who knows? Stranger, stranger things have happened. But one thing about the Sevilla side is that when when you look at them and you look at the lineups, you can see there's such a big gap in quality between them and Valencia. And mm-hmm. that's why even when Valencia were on top of them, I never felt that Valencia were going to finish out of yeah. Sevilla because yeah. the quality in the squad is, is good. It's just maybe it's a bit old or they really lack the right manager and Lopetegui, mm-hmm. there were questions about him last season. Yeah. But now with Mandiliba, he's gotten seven points out of nine and... Yeah. The two points he dropped, that was against Celta, where they were down to 10 men for most of the game. Still, so. the, still the way they messed up here was just pretty chaotic and disappointing. Yeah. But back to, there was something you said before about how Sevilla are playing simple football. Yeah. In the pre match interview, in the post match interviews, yes, the Rekic, you know, said Mendeleba has given them simple instructions. I'm like, <laughs> can't. I'm like, San Paoli, what kind of instructions were you giving this team? Like, is telling Rakitic to play as a false nine at camp now simple or mm-hmm. stupid? Yeah, I, I feel maybe San Paoli still thinks this is Sevilla 16-17, where yeah. it was very the thing, Yeah, The thing is that um, San Paoli is not a coach for a relegation dog fight man is so yeah. I, I think that when you get when you're a relegation dog fight you just have to go back to business sometimes <laughs> but, but let's play let's play an imaginary scenario here mandilaba keeps them up they finish 10th let's say by some miracle they win the europa league do you, do you keep him i don't Pers- know i'm, I'm per- to- per- 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 personally Personally, no. No? How come? <laughs> yeah, it's not going to happen. That's me, how come? No, okay, 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 okay. okay, okay, okay. okay. Let's I, I, I'll, I'll tell them, I'll tell them. They finish 10th. And do you still keep them? It's a weird, it's a weird one because, well, I mean, he maybe he could be a late bloomer and he goes on to become Sevilla's best manager of all time with five consecutive Europa leagues or whatever. Yeah. Maybe, like, let's not rule anyone out based on the level they've coached at before, but it just feels to me that if there's a better and more, like, project-wise option in the summer that you pick that. But then that depends on the vision of Monchi and so what are their vision is they should pick the right manager. Yeah, they should pick the right manager. It's just that whatever vision a club like Sevilla should be, it's not really a Mendelebar team, but I guess that's just me yeah, but looking at the past that, experience. Yeah, it's never gotten that opportunity, though. Like, this is possibly his biggest job in his, like, that. Yeah, it, it is his biggest job, so let's see what he does with it. Yeah, let's see. Uh, well, Sevilla and Valencia, they should be hoping to be where Atletico Madrid are because they're absolutely fine at the moment. I think Griezmann scored a brace. He's, he keeps on breaking records. I think he's, still, he's scored in more than 10 goals in nine consecutive La Liga seasons. He's on fire since the start of the season. Yeah, he's been doing pretty, yeah, he's been doing pretty good. Like, the start of the season, he was like, he was like the bright light in a really terrible athletic team, but since the World yeah. Cup, he's taken that disappointment and channeled it into very, very good performances. I think we can say that he's been at least a top three player in the league since the World Cup resumed. Yeah. And, and if, and I, rem- I remember like, what I, I did like a best, 
11 of the halfway point, I put Griezmann in and some people on Reddit were like, really? But I'm like, this guy is quietly having a good season. It's just his teammates are messing him up. And now, you know, the team is singing to his tune as well. So, yeah. yeah. I'll say the one thing with Griezmann, though, is at the start of the season, he only played those 30 minutes because mm-hmm. this, this league has been so long that we forget that yeah, many, many know, months, moons ago. You could only play 30 minutes because Atleti and Barcelona were playing a game of chicken and Atleti won that game. Mm-hmm. And I wonder what would have happened to Atleti's season if he was playing the full 90 minutes and he was actually like fully fit and maybe they would have lost some games that they lost or dropped points in certain places. Uh, I don't really think he, he it would have changed too much because... There were games where he was involved in that they got whooped by like Porto and Club Brugge, and that yeah. the whole like um, team was done. And also the fact that there were presences or whatever however you say that in English in the <laughs> dressing room that shall not be named. So yeah, yeah, that <laughs> that was subject of uh, controversial action against Real Madrid. Or not controversial, but like he should have scored. Uh, but. Moving on to the players that are at Atleti right now, Griezmann's there. They've gone on this beastly uh, winning streak since, or unbeaten run since the World Cup, or since they lost to Barcelona. Next up, they play Barcelona. So they'll lose to us again. Yeah. <laughs> I need to <laughs> yeah. Who, yeah. who am I kidding? But here's how we're go- here's how they are going to lose. It's not how we're going to play fantastic football. We're going to bore them to death, and they'll <laughs> give up and walk. Of the pitch, yeah. We'll, we'll stop that later. Let's go yeah. on, go on. Or maybe they do what Atleti typically does in that they win in the For, game. Yeah, they're winning it quite comfortably. You're singing Chilo Simeone's praises, and you're like, "Oh wow, this is this is beautiful." And then ten minutes to the end of the game, they decide, you know what? We're just gonna sit down, defend, and hope it's we nice. don't make a mistake. And hope is the I have so many close calls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like like I said on the chat, like Atleti, even when they're not playing well, their games are super interesting. It's so yeah, they, they, always, they always make they always keep you engaged somehow. <laughs> oh wow, because that that came in as chance. That was so close. Because if that was in an offside, that would have been a penalty. When Luis Suarez was offside, him and yeah, that was the ball. magic. And yeah. you know, normally, right? Because. Atleti a rival to my team. Like subconsciously, I want the penalty to be given, but then because I also like Valencia and it will obviously be a shame if the game relegated, I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> Almeria have to do this. It does what like I, that's just what Atleti do to me, man. Like Yeah. Yeah, they are they're an enigma. But I want an Almeria. Something like as as a fellow relegation battler with Almeria, like, like when I see their team, I, I get jealous. Actually I, I think I was telling you two weeks ago that even though Valencia were above Almeria at the moment, like Almeria look Almeria actually have quality. It's just that their away record is pathetic. Because <laughs> yeah, you look at players like Samu Costa, Robert mm-hmm. Tony, they could they, they walk into Valencia. They, they walk into Valencia. Yeah, actually, like, oh. If we if we do a combined eleven for Valencia and Almeria. <laughs> I can only think of Gaia, Gaia Mamadashvili, Korea, and Almeida, pretty much. Korea is a bit debatable, but ah, uh, he's got a Almeida. Yeah, yeah, okay, Korea and Almeida. That's just it. Yeah. Even Lino, as good as he is compared to the rest of his teammates, like yeah, he's as good as Ramazani. Who no, doesn't start, I want to really mention Ramazani. I'll, I'll like mention the. And Bill Alturi when he's fit, and yeah. Luis Suarez, Baptista. Baptista is really doing a good job and they have playing out of position uh, again. And ba- Barbara. Yeah, and Barbara, and Barbara, yeah. And Melero, who mm-hmm. they signed from Levante and who's scoring like goals for fun. And you just wonder whether Valencia, like, I know there's a lot of, sorry to bring up Valencia, but I know there's a lot of like issues with FFP, but. It's a summer where Jose Luis Morales was a free. Moy Gomez was signed for two million. Melero was signed for three or four million. 
there was quality there and so but Amaria they they could have Amaria. even gotten Campania from the second mission. Only God knows why he's still there. Yeah. But but going back to Amaria, like the you can see that there's a plan behind this club and there's a certain project that they have mm-hmm. with the experience players that it brought in to help stabilize them and the young mm-hmm. players are on the bench and I I just don't I could be wrong, but because they have some tough games coming up, they have Atletic, they have Hetafe, and they have Real Madrid coming up. But I really don't see them going down at the at this moment, given their form, given the way things are, and the sort of performances that they're putting in. But I guess time will tell. Mm. The thing is, I can't see Valladolid, Hetafe, Cadiz, Almeria going down because they're not. It's not like they're playing. Ter- they're not playing terribly. One and then two. They actually have the quality the qualities where you can say there's a way we can stay up. Like it's not really wishful thinking. No, no. With no. Valencia, it's reaching the territory of hope and wishful thinking. Yeah, but the thing though is Valencia they have easier games in on paper. Easier games that are also a double edged sword, because if you don't win yeah. those easier games, you're you're done. You're done. Yeah. Like I, I, I told Taps. Valencia have to win their next three games. It's not negotiable. <laughs> How you guys are going to do that, I don't know, but you have to. Yeah, we'll we'll have to do that. So should we talk about the referees? Uh, a bit, or let's talk yeah, about let's, let's talk about let's, let's talk about, let's, let's talk about let's, we don't want to bore the fans, the uh, listeners. Okay. Let's talk about the referees. Oh wow! So apparently, <laughs> there's drama going on because La Liga's corporate Twitter account they produced a video about how the referees are doing this season and they pretty much parroted everything we've been saying on this podcast or every single La Liga fan has been saying that there's too many red cards the league is not as balanced compared to other leagues like for example I think there was a stat where it's like there are four times more red cards for Spanish teams in La Liga than versus the Europa League per game and there was like three something times more red cards for Spanish teams in La Liga than in the Champions League. And what the league wants to do is they want to have an independent organization of referees. They want to, like, clean house, essentially, and create yes. a new structure that's Finally. separate from the league and separate from the Royal Federation. But the problem is the Royal Federation or the FA don't like La Liga too much or Rubiales doesn't like that too much, and he sees this as he's barking on the wrong tree. And so that might be hard to solve. As well, Please, can the... you... sorry, Tinter, can you yeah. send that video to me? I need it yeah. to make. Yeah. My... I need to make myself feel good. Yeah, I'll, I'll send. I'll send it to you. Okay. I'll send it to you. Uh, but there, there's there's also something that happened today. Apparently, there were some referees that were insulted in Coita, uh, which is Morocco but Spain. We'll mm-hmm. get into the politics of that, uh, but. The, because of that, the referees want to stop La Liga. They essentially want to go on strike because they've been getting bashed on all corners recently. So we we're having some some machinations that could happen in Spain. So wasn't there another team that threatened to stop the season? I think it was something related to the other clubs stopping the Super League that they don't go on strike or something. Yeah, so that has been wanted, a long year. Yeah, yeah, it's been that, that was there was a law where the league wanted to go on strike because of a certain sports law that got solved. So now it's the referees that want to go on strike. So uh and there's a league meeting on Wednesday, which Laporta will be involved in, obviously, explaining his case, and they're gonna discuss the new structure or the new proposal for referees. So that's gonna be interesting. Fine, at least something is going to change for the better. Might change, might change. It's Spain, so <laughs> might. <laughs> but since we mentioned Laporta, we have to talk about Barcelona. Sadly, um, it seems like do you see the three guys who were with PSG shirts who were watching the game on the street? <laughs> no, no, no. So three, three Spanish guys or French guys, whatever. They had PSG jerseys. They went up on a tree close to the Atafe Stadium to watch the game, and. After seeing this game, I wonder whether it was worth the risk. It was or <laughs> exactly was it worth? No, to to be fair to Barcelona, compared to what they did against Girona, this 
was not that bad. At least they created some chances. Yeah, they hit the bar but, twice and no, but, but not only with Barcelona, the problem. The Jordan game was just a bad a game of no creativity. The problem not only isn't that we create chances, we don't create chances, we create chances. We are just so terrible at taking them. Like how the Rafinha and Balde won in quick toss. I was like, is it worth it? Yeah. <laughs> is it worth watching? But, but to, to be fair, it seems like there were lots of bad misses in this game. Like towards the end, Bora yeah. If in fact they had their own bad misses too, like um, yeah. Mayoral had that one that was really close, and yeah, Shabby, there, there, there was another one. But yeah, Shabby yeah. complained about the pick. <laughs> yeah, um, Hetafe essential. Like some clubs do this where they, like you have a certain length of grass that, like a max of grass. Like how you should cut the grass. I think you guys know what I mean. Yeah. So Hetafe basically, you know, pushed our that limit. Like they, what they did was fine, but they, like they basically stayed at the threshold. Yeah, that's the word. And taller grass makes it harder to move the balls more smoothly or for shorter passing games. So that's something the possession heavy sides or like the teams that are more dominant usually complain about. So this is not a new complaint. No, it's not a new complaint, but the complaint is it that, an excuse? It, nope, not at all. No, but it's a complaint we've had before from many, yeah, <laughs> from many Barcelona coaches, especially from Xavi. So, when, when Xavi said that, I was like, This is like what I expect Xavi to complain about. He also complained about playing at 4 15 p.m. Spanish time and saying that Barcelona are not used to that. Again, <laughs> we are not exactly in the Champions League or in any deep European competition. So those spots have to be reserved for either the more critical games of the week day of the week like um what do you call it? Like Valencia versus Sevilla, which is like a huge yeah. game for multiple reasons. And then the fact that, you know, some of that team actually like, someone exactly Sevilla playing in Europe. They played in Europe on Thursday, so they need a little slot. Yeah. And yeah. They're gonna play We've heard that complaint before from many managers, but yeah, Mallorca, Mallorca's, Mallorca's one is the one that I, I'm like, okay, I see your point because they complain about playing uh 2 p.m. on 2 p.m. during the week or during the weekend, and that's because of can games. So I, I can see that I can see that argument because mm-hmm. I can see that it could affect them, and it is very hot in Mallorca. Obviously, they're like very close to Africa, um, but. With Xavi's complaint about playing at 4 15, I, I'm not sure. What else did he complain about? Let me debunk it. <laughs> I, I, don't I know. hope he complained about his forwards not scoring goals. Cause... <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a big issue against Atleti, isn't there? Because Atleti are really a really good form. I guess for Barcelona's point of view, Llorente is not going to play, so that's good news because he got his fifth yellow. But the, the, defensively, I'm not worried. In fact, that, that's why I said we're going to bore them to death. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the only good news is that Pedri and De Jong and Dembele are back in training, and then Pedri and De Jong might make this game. So I'm like, okay, maybe this game might be worth watching. <laughs> yeah, but Christensen isn't going to be there. And the last time they played, Christensen was one of the stars of the game. Sure. So, wait, since Roberto is injured, that means... Eric Garcia send it back. Uh, I am I almost <laughs> <laughs> actually But but the thing is I think the, the, uh, the alternative to Eric Garcia is Marco Alons. The thing is Atlas don't really have that like nine that's gonna run at you, right? So maybe that's a game where Eric Garcia Yeah and to be fair to Eric Garcia, he's not he he it's not like Atleti have the kind of players that he normally struggles against. Yeah. So he <laughs> might be he, he might be okay. But what if the pie plays then? Because he's not been fit. And... The, I mean, the pie is not. He's not like lightning he's not power, quick. but he has the and, trickery. Yeah, he has the trickery. But I think Eric Garcia reads the game well enough not to be beaten by trickery. Just like when. 
obviously someone is much bigger and stronger that's obviously out of his hands like there's, there's nothing he can't grow bigger and stronger his size the response yeah. <laughs> so there's nothing he can do there yeah. like, it becomes like you know just calm clear sure he can take care of himself yeah. so, I, I, mean, I mean what one bad egg can spawn <laughs> 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 unless we can also do this where we can play Baldi at right back and you know, um, I'll back left back. That's something I'd like to see, but will Javi do it? No. I think he's done that once before, but... I he's done that before, but then... Was that against Bayern Munich? Did... No, he played... Uh, no, but they actually played right back for a long time, towards yeah. the, before the World Cup, because everyone was injured. Yeah. So, it can be done. And also, play as... Bad as the forwards are, you know, actually playing the strikers instead of playing a defender or midfielder there might like, actually <laughs> not be a strange idea, you know. So you don't agree with playing uh, Baldi as the left winger or Actually, if, okay, I, it's not like I didn't agree with it. I didn't, I, I didn't agree with who played that left back because I was like, it's better you play Alba as the left winger because he has the better final ball. And he has the experience there. He was a left winger before. He yes. Before and if Alba got that chance that Balde had, he just scored it. Yeah. So that, that that's the thing where I'm really frustrated with some of Javi's decisions because I, I understand it. Is it good for the striker's confidence? No, but I understand it. It's just you, you are this close to greatness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Should Lewandowski be worried about his Pachichi Tyson because he's not scoring at all and he's lucky that Benzema cares more about the Champions League right now. So well, will, he make a, will he make me look foolish and score a hat trick against Atleti? <laughs> I think you set yourself up, man. <laughs> I was going to say, it's not like Benzema didn't try to score. We'll talk about Benzema this game next, later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, to be fair to Lohan, this he's a striker that depends on service. I mean, the service is awful. Like, when Rafinha just keeps hitting the first man with every cross. And I, don't, yeah. I, just, I just want to see Pedri play football again. <laughs> yeah, okay, uh... there's, a, there's a worst case scenario where if we lose to Atleti and Rayo, Maybe there can be a pretense of a title race, and maybe things can get exciting again. Yeah, yeah. Because just... even if you, even if you're like losing, at least you can get excited that you have something to look forward to. Yeah. You no, know, yeah. looking forward to just to the abyss. In inefficiency. <laughs> Yeah, the the, be- the best part about this game, besides the missed chances, was Lewandowski being introduced to Daniel Suarez. <laughs> And them going at each other. That that's something yeah. I enjoyed. I, I don't think I saw that part. No. I, I, yeah. I, I, at that point I was like, this isn't <laughs> worth it, man. I just yeah. said let me go talk to my friends. <laughs> no. Well yeah. we're, we're we're denied Alejo versus um Vinicius and that's the game because <laughs> Carlo Ancelotti wisely decided to rest Vinicius. But... Ancelotti is it. Let me keep what I want to say to myself. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Nacho, though, he scored late on. Um, he won the Battle of the Brothers. As soon as his brother came on, he was like, I'm going to prove that I'm the best player. <laughs> and Asensio scored. Uh, but Cadiz, uh, the goalkeeper, I, I forget his name. David Hill. Said, yeah, David Hill. Because we had led as much for so long. Mm-hmm. And he was <laughs> godly. But his performance against Real Madrid was amazing. And mm-hmm. save after save after save. And just wonder, like, even if Cadiz lose Ledesma, they're going to be okay because David Hill is not a bad keeper. I thought I thought they were going to struggle because of him. Cadiz are just like cockroaches, man. <laughs> it takes a tremendous effort to put these guys, to have these guys down. And credit to them, like that, never say a die attitude. Even if they may not have the quality that some other rivals have, like that, the attitude they learn that no matter what you throw at us, we're going to hang in. Like, that's, you know, that's just really commendable. Yeah. So, the defending, like, just having three Real Madrid players free at the back post was just... I, I don't know how Real Madrid didn't score more. <laughs> I was going to say, it's not as if Benzema didn't try to score more. Like, he, 
he had some huge he had a couple of huge misses. Rodrigo, uh, he won't want to remember this game fondly. No. With all the, say, with, all, with how good he made David Hill look and then some you know missed chances, but you know. At the end of the day, Real Madrid got the job done. Yeah, and they got the job done against Chelsea as well. Um, but I feel that maybe the two here was a very small margin, given the fact that Chelsea were down to ten men for so long. It's Chelsea you now they're, they're now going. They're going to. They're, they're going to increase that lead <laughs> on Tuesday. Like, let's be real. This is a team that. At this point, they might they just they should just call them loosely or something. Yeah. <laughs> that was a terrible joke. It's not one of my best ones, but so we shouldn't worry for Real Madrid going. To There's nothing to worry about. They're okay. they're playing against fancy team the semi final, which is not what I wanted because Pep and his stupid formations. <laughs> Bayern okay. man. Yeah, nothing to worry about. His famous last words. <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll preview the chat. I mean, I hope I'm I hope I'm wrong and there's a lot to worry about for them. <laughs> but I, I'm just being real, man. Like they're yeah. going to play with Chelsea again, yeah. and Joe Felix is going to, you know, fail to show up against the big boys once more. Once again. <laughs> but you know what, managers shouldn't see after they win games. Who? Do you know what they shouldn't see after they win games? No, I don't know. They shouldn't say manana libre because twice in a row <laughs> the, the manager has said has lost it. <laughs> and uh, by the lead of Villarreal, I, I saw this coming back from the gym and I'm like, okay, Villarreal are going to be winning this. They must be winning this more than 2-0. Then I saw the chat, Villarreal 0, Vidalit 2, and I'm like, what a way to start my weekend. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, like... Remember how we said last week that Villarreal are just going to turn around and lose to Elche or something, but getting lose to Elche this time, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> Chikwese went from scoring two absolute golazos against Real Madrid to miss me <laughs> at the empty post after rounding the goal. Oh. I, you can't write this stuff. No, you, you, you really can't. You and Pepe can't. Reina, like, rarely, like, growing up, right? There used to be a term called like making like losing the goalkeeper where like you place the ball in the opposite direction, the goalkeeper is diving. Now, as I started watching professional football, I rarely see that unless it's a penalty. But from open play, you almost never see that. In this game, I had the I can't say it was a good thing I saw it twice <laughs> or a bad thing. But we saw 40-year-old Pepperina get deceived twice. <laughs> Once by Amala, who finished that like a number nine. He's wearing a number nine shirt. Yeah. He's the midfielder. And El Yamik of all people dribbles <laughs> off the pitch and sends you the wrong way. Like, retire! <laughs> uh-huh, man. I yeah. retire. Like, oh, these old men should just stop. Like, all yeah. they just go home, man. Yeah, be around definitely need to new sets of goalkeepers not just one two really good sets of goalkeepers and they've they've been linked with Conan they've also been linked with a guy called Lubatovic who plays in Zagreb and uh, watching watching their games you can like if if only they had a goalkeeper if only like they would be such a better team (laughs) and but let's let's give credit to where credit is due Mm. to by the lead because they really entertained against Mallorca they it was a 3-3 game they were leading 3-2 until Muriki scored in the final moments. And in this game, they, they won 2-0. And you have to give credits, uh, to one, you have to give credits to uh, Pezzolano because he's mm-hmm. come in and we've seen a more offensive vitality than we saw on the Pacheta because there were yeah. times on the Pacheta where they just couldn't score to save their life. Yeah, and um, with River, though, you can also see quality is there. It's not, it's not like, I don't think quality is as much as Almeria, as just technically not Sevilla, but it's there. And it's being used effectively, and the team is playing to their strengths. And Pezzolano, I hope I said that right, you know, he also now has a taste of why we hit the referee in <laughs> Spain because he got sent off. Yeah, it's typical. It's like the initiation to the walk yeah. to La Liga. Yeah, are you really a La Liga coach if you've not gotten sent off or booked? 
You're not. Uh, no. I wonder. I don't think Ancelotti has been sent off for. I, he was meant to be sent off and banned for some games, but I don't know what happened. Yeah, Someone's at this. Well, let's not, let me not talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. But like a good note, don't say Maniana Libre if you win because we did lose the next game as Ancelotti and Setien found out. But <laughs> things, things look good for Betis because this was a very good week as Real Sociedad lost, uh, Villarreal lost. And that means that Betis are now, they now have top four in their hands. And Arisa Perez was really brilliant in this game. He scored a goal, he gave an assist. Uh, Carlos Monte, uh, Cesar Montes made it 2 1 with a beautiful Chilena. Uh, the commentator was talking about Hugo Sanchez. And finally, mm-hmm. uh, William Cavalli made it 3 1. And it was a very, very good display from Betis. They were killing Yeah, it was a very good game. Like, um, I also thought um, another really good performer was Luis Enrique. He really gave his fullback hell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, um, like and um, even though like the four is for real betis like Borja is not really scoring right now. Like everyone is trying to chip in with goals where they can. And like you said, given the context of the whole weekend, this is a massive win for them. And they face Russo say that soon. Yeah, they do. I, I believe that's at home, right? Yeah, it's at home. I'm not the yeah. If they win that, they have the head to head advantage and at this point, like you said, top four is in their hands. Yeah, it really is. It's it's a it's a bit of a toss up between them, the Real, and Real Sociedad. But I I would I don't know. Like thing is, Real Sociedad, they've been there for so long that it will almost be a tragedy if they don't finish top four. I think Betis is the team that's the most ambitious out of the three that I feel will benefit the most. Although I think um, it will suck in the Champions League, I do think they'll make really good signings if they get it. Villarreal, I see them as a team of the most experience to do well in the Champions League. So, but I sort of want yeah. Betis to get it. But... I mean, I don't really care who gets in. It's just, um, <laughs> it's just the case that oh, I don't know who is going to get in because all of them are so inconsistent. Like, next week, Betis can lose and then both Rousseau and Villarreal win and then the conversation is different. Like, Although, to be fair, if Rusty yeah, had do beat Betis, then I think Betis can face top four. Like... Yeah, that is true. Next week, yeah. Betis are away to Osuna. We'll talk about them soon. Uh, but let's talk about Espanyol. They, the new can't manager, defend. Has a, they can't defend. They have our friends, uh, Sergi Gomez and Cabrera. Cesar Montes can score goals. Which he can good. score beautiful goals at that. <laughs> And they're, they're, they're in a bit of trouble. Luis Garcia said after the game that anyone who doubts Espanol's ability to come back doesn't know Espanol. I don't think he knows Espanol. <laughs> but the good thing, though, is they have Cadiz next. So, at home. Good for who? Uh, good for both teams. It's, mm-hmm. it's another opportunity. It's another La Liga relegation battle. It seems we have a relegation dogfight. You, you, you know something? You talked about, we've not really talked about this. But it's as if we've just accepted that they're going to go down and <laughs> it doesn't make any sense why they're in this position, but... No, we, we've been speaking about them as like, okay, they're going to be okay because they have Jose Lu and they have At this point, I don't think they are in Valencia. I think that saying they are Valencia will be okay right now is more opium. Yeah. Or more in the word they like using copium. You know, you're coping with reality. <laughs> because the thing is that all the other rivals are not doing terribly. Like there's not none of them is on a six game loss streak like Espanyol. Espanyol yeah. <laughs> none of them is afraid of winning home games or scoring non penalty goals like Valencia. So <laughs> So and, and, and the thing with both clubs is that both clubs hired two legends in the hope of doing a Simeone or Zidane. And it's, it's not worked out so far. Yeah. Let's so for Espanyol, but, you know, I mean, I think Cadiz will beat them and beat them comfortably, but it's, it is an opportunity, like you said. Yeah, before we move on from this game, I just want to touch on Montoya, who hadn't played in, I think, six months, and he was very emotional after the game. He played the right, in the right-back spot, and he, he did an okay job. 
but it might say more about Espanol players that they didn't get more at Martin Montoya. Yeah, it's, 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 well, I mean, he wasn't he played in the six months actually. It, that was he, injured. Yeah, he was injured, and I think he had registration issues in the beginning of the season with most of the players. Oh yeah. Him. Yeah. yeah. Good, good for him then. Yeah. But like you said. If you are Espanol, whoever is playing there on the left, I think of Cuadra. Again, someone who I, I have, I had high hopes for at the time, but now I'm like, I don't know if the problem is Espanol or you. I think, I think it might be Espanol. <laughs> but, 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 but then we have two players that are in or about to hit double digits. Yeah, that, that is true. And moving on, let's bet us the, the next opponents are Osasuna. And Osasuna did start the week against Rayo Vallecano. And Rayo, they're back to winning ways. Uh, they won in this game against Osasuna in the battle for who's going to finish eighth. EC Palasson was back at it again. Moy Gomez scored a beautiful goal. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. They did get straight to the left foot. And yeah, Rayo, they finally. They've got, this was around the same time last year, I believe, where they broke their win, their like on um, their win death streak against Espanol. Yeah. So yeah, I think we've fairly established the pattern of a Rayo season now. <laughs> yeah. Threatening, dark. threatening yeah. the European places, then go off the ball, and then just you know you're safe anyway. So yeah. nothing to worry about. Yeah, which is why when um we were talking about James, if he comes to Rayo, and I was like, I, I would love to see that. And Taps was saying that James, he starts well, he kills up in the middle. And I'm like, this yeah, is he, he, Rayo by He'll sit them, he'll sit them down to the ground. <laughs> as long as he scores a couple bangers, but like there's already issues for that. So, and EC Selection was chanted at the end of the game. It would be nice to see him play one game for Spain. Hasselu has done it, so I can't he do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, given the fact that Hasselu might be in the Segunda next season, so maybe. I, 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 at this point, why not? <laughs> why not? Why not? Moving on to another exciting team, Girona and Tati Castiano. Hold on, I have to take a picture. I have to take a picture of this slide. <laughs> there's, this, there's, this, there's this running joke I have. <laughs> with someone and it's all about like silencing your critics and whatnot, you know. <laughs> especially when well, especially when it comes to Vinny Junior. <laughs> anyway, Gass- yeah, Gassadina yeah, kept a clean sheet too. Again, like again, yeah. <laughs> but this one this time it's against Elche, so it's true. It's understandable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but to be fair, Elche actually they started the game the brighter side, but since they did an Elche at the end. So. Now, now, the question we all have to ask ourselves is, actually, when are Elche going to be officially relegated? Ooh, we can check the table because... No, nobody, Elche... nobody really brings that up. Yeah, no, no one really brings that up, but I think it's soon because Almeria are 17 points out of Elche, so, and there are nine games left to go in the season. So it's possible that by May 5th or May 7th, I'm sorry, by May 4th, they might be relegated. It's possible. That seems too far away. Well, given that the season is going to end in June, right? Yeah. The yeah, season is ending in June, so... I guess in a normal season, they'd be relegated just after the international break or something. Yeah, yeah, they will. Uh, let's, let's, let's look at our case fixtures, though. And for what? Advanced, yeah? Three points for the <laughs> other teams. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just see who they actually have. Actually, yeah, like it's not looking great for them. They have Valencia next, which might be the most winnable game in the schedule. Then they have Celta, then they have Rayo, then they have Almeria, then they have Atletico. So, yeah, I don't see them. <laughs> actually, do, wow, do see them wow, pro- wow, Professor. <laughs> wow. It's taking you this long to see that. No, no, I'm wondering if they actually get to win before they get relegated. Or oh, oh, yeah, or if they get a win. Nah, I, I don't see it uh, anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if they finish on 13 points and match the record that Fortune had, that would be so sad. But <laughs> it, it's... 
they just need to fight for two more draws then or three. Yeah. <laughs> They just need to do that, but I I don't get this because they're not as bad as quarterback fourteen fifteen, but they somehow can get results. Like I th- I think we we said at the beginning of the season that out of everyone, they had, it's not like their squad is bad because this is largely the same squad as last season that did quite well for themselves. So just that other teams improved their squads way more than them. Yeah, that's 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 it, and I feel we've seen that a lot this season. That teams that didn't really have the transfer windows, like Elche, Valencia, Espanol, Espanol, Valencia is transferring though. I thought it was. I mean, it's not near. It's it's all right. It's nowhere near as bad as some of these other guys. Yeah, or even Sevilla. The only one that had a bad transfer window that didn't wipe quite well is Cadiz. Somehow, because no. they fixed it in January. Yeah, they fixed it in January, and also they. I think Botonda, who they got pretty late, was actually quite a good signing for them. Mm. So, yeah, let's move on to Mallorca and South. Hey, hey, before we leave Girona, I just yeah. want to say Castano's celebration, like the shush. Who is he shushing? <laughs> because I'm sorry, that chance he missed against Barcelona, you have every right to be criticized. You're a striker. You should think. But- I, I I feel though strikers they miss a lot of easy chances though. Easy like that. Yeah, yeah really easy <laughs> chances. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Strikers. La, La, Liga, La Liga strikers this season they missed a lot of very easy chances. Honestly. Especially against Barcelona, I think. They're so as like, every time it's as if they stay get just that nature. In a reverse picture. The same thing happened with Girona Barcelona, where it's like there was a guilty. Ivan game. Martin. Yeah. And, and this is a team that normally scores like really beautiful goals and goals from out of nowhere. So, yeah. But I, I do feel his fans went a bit overboard. Like, if someone, a player deletes his social media, you know something. Yeah. The, yeah some, sometimes people do go, go overboard and they yeah. shouldn't do that. Yeah, and maybe some players are just fragile. Like maybe it's just yeah, yeah. yeah. Like like I said last week, and I don't think I can word it as safely as I did it last time. But if you watched it last week, you know my stance <laughs> on this. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, let's move on to the final game of the weekend, which is the, actually the final game of the weekend. Actually, uh, um, Celta playing against uh, Mallorca. Mallorca, they they hadn't been good away from home, but all of a sudden, a mass plays a really brilliant game and he scores the winner and he had he had a chance to get a hat-trick on that in this game. Yeah, he had many chances. And that, that's unusual for him because he doesn't really like get that many chances in other games he's played. But you know, well done to him for scoring and for Celta, like what was the last time they actually lost? Was was it against Atleti? Yeah it was against Atleti. That's last time I remember them losing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's the last time I remember that. And that game, they didn't deserve to lose. No. <laughs> Athletic just somehow oh, got you with. But yeah, like, um, yeah, it's great for Mallorca. Most of February. Mm. So, yeah. And for Mallorca, like, I think we're both kind of worrying that maybe they can get themselves involved in this relegation battle. Yeah. Because they started slipping to the bottom of, I think, this win. Yeah, I don't think anyone in the bottom trees or bottom maybe actually they're not actually out of the woods yet <laughs> no but but I, I was saying in terms of the fact that you have nine games left and the chances are mallorca barring a disaster they're going to get at least five points mm-hmm. yeah so i'll say everyone above celta vigo is safe mm-hmm. I'll, I think, I'll, I'll I think you will sort of be fine because yeah this, this loss is just the should just be a temporary setback. Yeah, like I, I will, I will call Sevilla safe, but like I'll call them safe. But like the thing is, like you said, like they've been hit or miss all season, and maybe this mm-hmm. Mendilibar honeymoon would end sometime, mm-hmm. and they'll go back to what mm-hmm. they were at the start of the season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I do think they're they're very close to being safe as well because I can see them getting at least seven or eight points yeah. in nine games. Yeah. No, just looking at like South have to go to the. Um, Bernabeu next, but they have El Chapter that, so that should take care of yeah, that's, that's <laughs> <the last> <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Uh, basically, whoever has Elche between now and the end of your season should have three free yeah. points. <laughs> yeah, but but the only thing though is with Celta is like you can see them easily losing the next three away games because they're going to the Bernabeu, they're going to La Ceramica, they're going to play against Getafe. They have San Mamés as well, so it might be one of those things where they're like dragged back late on, but mm-hmm. then they but they they are playing Valencia at home, which seems like a home banker for them <laughs> these days too. So. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I think I think will be alright. It's like yeah, I feel like this is everyone that's below Sevilla is the ones that are really in this fight now. True. For now. For now. For now. And with that, let's move on to the Champions League. The Champions. Woo. Yeah, I'm gonna get a soundbite for that. <laughs> But we already spoke a bit about Real Madrid versus Chelsea. Chelsea, obviously, they're at a deficit in that game. They lost to Brighton this weekend. Joao Felix got um, embarrassed because of uh, and not tracking back. So there's lots of kebab about that. Do you see Chelsea pulling out a rabbit out of the hat in Stamford Bridge? <laughs> see, Chelsea's come back into this game. Oh. Uh, you, you you get to choose whatever I say or do on the podcast next week. Yeah, you already cursed Benfica, so but we'll get onto that soon. Um, <laughs> oh God, why did you remind me? <laughs> <laughs> so next up is Bayern City, and Bayern they must be feeling like they're stupid right now because they sacked Julian Nagelsmann because hey, we want to in the treble. We're going to bring in Thomas Tuchel. He's the guy to lead us for that. They got knocked out of the Pokal. By Freiburg, they play against Man City. They lose three zero. Upamecano has one of his worst games in his career. The weekend, Bayern they're drawing to Hoffenheim, I believe. But yeah, Hoffenheim. Dortmund drew to Stuttgart. Yeah, yeah, they play similarly with Borussia Dortmund, who have the ability to snatch defeat after. Oh, bitch. <laughs> because in this game, Borussia Dortmund they were winning two zero. Stuttgart, who I believe they were, they went away to, they had a man sent off, so they were playing against 10 men. They equalized the 2-2, Stuttgart. And yeah. we, have a, we have a common Dortmund friend, Dortmund, Hannah, who's just complained to me about this and being emotional. And I'm like, you know, just calm down. It's, it'll happen. Like, Dortmund are going to win this. And Reina scores 3-2. <laughs> and at that point, I'm like, you know what, Dortmund, this, this is their year. They have this covered, but no. Dortmund, don't know Dortmund. It's, it's sad. I don't know how you can support a team like that. But, and I support Valencia. <laughs> yeah. I think mean, we, we know we're crap. There isn't that emotional roller coaster that happens. Yeah, it, it, they, don't, they don't play with your feelings like that. <laughs> yeah, but going back to Bayern, like, how bad does... I know this hangs at 2020, but how bad does this look for the Bayern board, given what we just described? I mean, it's, it's a complete stinker because, like, the decision, even without hindsight, it made no sense to sack Naguzma. Oh, like, the, there's no basis to sack him. Like, you're top of the league by a narrow enough margin in the Champions League semi quarterfinal. That's the semi final by a long time. <laughs> and then you're, the, you're still in the DFB Pokal. I didn't even know there were enough that are DFB Pokal to just now. I'm like, wow. <laughs> That's to Chaliban soccer for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, well, guess, I guess we were thinking like, oh, maybe Tuchel has this good record against Guardiola in the Champions League and he's going to help us in this tie. If I'm not wrong, there was a time this season that City beat Chelsea by 4 0. I'm trying to remember who the Chelsea manager was then, was it? Tuchel or Potter? It was probably Potter. Yeah, it was Potter because it was in January. But still, it's like, doesn't make any sense. Well, now, those will just be laughing you like that. Eh? Yeah. Um, I guess you guys can lose more to Man City in the second leg. Uh, okay. Yeah, maybe, maybe. But it's been a great week for Manchester City and for Harlan Collins. He finally beat Bayern Munich. He matched the Premier League uh, top uh, top scorer record mm-hmm. uh, with 38 games. He could beat the all time record in. For scoring goals in one single Premier League season, so he's feeling he's really feeling good playing Holland. And they beat Bayern by three goals to zero, so they're they have a foot in the semi final. It'll take a collapse from a certain team esque 
that for them not to for them to get knocked out and it seems this might be their year because even in the premier league arsenal, yeah arsenal are starting to do an arsenal and so this things are looking very good things are lining up well for them yeah is, is this their year to win the champions league or is real madrid going to beat them again I don't think. Real Madrid faces a summer find the way to win. So, and City are guess City are going to lose because Pep is going to overcomplicate things again. But doesn't Holland provide that X factor? Because last season, they Holland could get injured before that game, and then yeah. what happens? That is true. I sort of want him to get. The or he could just have a stinker <laughs> because he's had some stinkers this season. True. That, that, that is true to be sure but let's fingers crossed uh we have two really good games in the quarterfinal and in the semifinal of this bracket now let's move on to the other bracket where oscar you've cursed that <laughs> they've they've lost to porto i know that's probably maybe your statement but they played a worse game of, of this season in the champions league against inter milan like inter had them on the fringe like this was a massive class from Simone Inzaghi and Bastoni was impressive. Uh, no. Oh, um, I guess I guess Intel win the second leg then. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, there's no there's no further analysis to be drawn from this fit, field prediction of mine. Right? Yeah. But, uh, but do you know something curious with the Italian side of the draw? I, I believe every single Italian side listed there didn't win their game this weekend. Because Napoli... Yeah, 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 yeah. None of them won, none of them won. Inter lost to Monza at home, which mm. was quite... I, the, I, I looked at the both at the Mil- AC Milan and Napoli lineups and there was really heavy rotation. So, I mean, at this point, it's, our Italian team is... Nine, I say 80% going to be in the final. Yeah. Let's give Benfica a 20% chance of reaching there. <laughs> Or maybe ten percent. But yeah. anyway, um, at least in this Champions League, man, I was so rooting for Benfica to get to the final. Well, uh, I guess the curse just has too much power, and if it's the curse <laughs> that stopped them, and it's not my <laughs> curse, then yeah. Man City better, you know, they better forget how to win the Champions League. <laughs> True, true. But let's talk about Milan and Napoli. I was, I was a bit surprised at the scoreline. And just given the way the game went, you'd expected Napoli to have won that by quite comfortable margin. Mm-hmm. Even with the San Siro. But again, Magic Mike Manian he was there to make some really good saves. Brian Diaz had a really good move for that first goal. And Milan, right now, they, see, they find themselves in a very good position going into going to Naples and yeah. the last time they went to Naples they won 4-0 so this time like the difference is awesome and it's back yeah, yeah. Wait, out, wait out of all of the games this is the really the one to watch at this point because it's on a knife edge you know AC Milan have that lead but then they're going to the um, Maradona Stadium and then Napoli have a fully fit squad against a and I'm not going to make any prediction. <laughs> I'm done with that. <laughs> no. I mean, I want Napoli. I prefer Napoli between the two teams. Yeah. I, actually, I prefer Napoli, but the Laurentiis, I do not like that man. <laughs> like, yeah. If not for all of his stupid statements, the fact that he robbed Nigeria of Osimhen at the last AFCON, <laughs> is enough for me to want Napoli to dissolve as a football team. <laughs> but if they such shoot good football that I can I can overlook one bad egg. So if they were to go all the way, I'd love that. Yeah. Because yeah. out of all of the teams in this bracket, they're the ones most likely to stop Real Madrid when they get to the final. <laughs> so don't, don't you think Inter can be given how well they played? No. Play? No. 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 Inter, when they see Spanish clubs, in normal, I'm Barcelona is a Catalan team. That's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but not really. We beat Inter just this time. Yeah. 
And let's not let's not go into that because if I talk out the Dumfries handball, we'll be here all day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not yeah. letting that one go. <laughs> No, no, no. But let, let's move on to the sister competition of the Champions League. The, the, the superior competition. Yeah. Unless Sevilla get knocked out and then it's just <laughs> another waste of my time. Oh, yeah. And, and, and this, 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 this tie, is, they're, they're pretty much a knife edge in every single game in the Europa League. We spoke about Manchester United. Uh, Sevilla, 2-2. Really remarkable game. Manchester United scoring both goals. They scored four goals. Two for Sevilla, two for themselves. They're so generous. Uh, they want to keep the uh, yeah, keep going so, so generous. <laughs> and Harry Maguire, poor. I, I hate picking on players, but like he's so lucky, man. He's so. I mean, that's been his fault. The Ma- Manchester United have have been doing really good this season, and one of the main reasons has been the fact that they are not playing a walking fridge at the back, and now their two best defenders are injured, so they're going to have. You know, the Barcelona experience, you know, how it feels to not have your full lineup available for an important game. Yeah, and they have to and, with Sanchez pick one. So that's just. Yeah. Although Sevilla are not. On, the on, on paper, right yeah, they, they, they have the history against my United. And you know what Mourinho says? <laughs> in Football the history. Heritage. <laughs> Football heritage. <laughs> Uh, the history is the history one is um, Bonucci. Sorry, I but I'm mixing my moves up. Like. So Chiellini, what what's wrong with me? <laughs> oh man. Anyway, anyway, um, yeah. I mean, I'd like Sevilla to win, but I'm not holding my breath. Yeah, it's gonna be. And by the way, saying I'd like a team to win is not a prediction. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not, not going to hold you up for that. But it's just you said it confidently last week that some people are going to go through, and I told you you already cursed the Benfica. You're not cursed Benfica. I'm, I'm, I'm all in for Benfica, but they're they're definitely they're possibly going out right now. Uh, Juventus, they are also part of the Italian squadron that decided that this week Serie A didn't matter. They lost. Uh, they lost this week as well against Sassuolo. They're going to play against another greenish team in Sporting Club de Portugal. Uh, they're going to Portugal for this one. Do you see any chance of Sporting to come back? The score is 1 0, right? Yes, it is 1 0. I mean, it is very possible. I mean, in an ideal world, you'd like you'd like to see Sevilla and Sporting go through because it's, I, I, I mean, no. Just for the fact that I prefer those two teams by far to Manchester United and Juventus, but I don't think it will happen. No. Like it, and what about Roma versus Feyenoord? It's also very knife edge. Roma, they got beaten by Feyenoord 1 0 in Holland, and now Mourinho has to make another comeback. Feyenoord are in really good form. They're going to win the Dutch League most likely. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to. <laughs> 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 I hope no final fans listen to this. Well, I think final will go through. Oh my god! <laughs> Which means they're out. It's like they're it's like they're just going to go out quite. They're going to go out like life seems in them. Four zero. But it is that I didn't to my to be fair. I didn't really back Dortmund. I said I'd like to back them, but it's Dortmund. Yeah. With Leipzig, I know I backed them and said they can't, they can't do something. <laughs> yeah, let, let's see. Let's see if he cursed this underdog story with Union Saint Gallois. And I didn't, re- re- I didn't really make a prediction there, but no, no, that I'm telling you not to. Pretty much. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm not we, we're going to discuss. We're going to discuss the game in general because, like, this is such a beautiful story. I spoke about this last year mm-hmm. when, um, when I discovered them and how they were doing. Pretty well in the Belgian league. Surprisingly, they're owned by the same owners of Brighton, which should tell you, which shouldn't surprise people. How good? Yeah, you should tell you how good Brighton's owners are. Yeah, which would be it'll be interesting because if Brighton actually finish in a Europa League position, the the whole MCO competition comes into the bracket again because if they Mm -hmm. get each other, this see what happens. But they tied in Germany um, with uh, Bayer Leverkusen. Javi Alonso's by Leverkusen. And now they have to get it over the line. And I really hope they do. 
I don't think yeah. it's really it's really, I have, it's, really I have, I have, it's really nice. Yeah, my ideal final four lineup is Sevilla, Juventus, Union, and uh, Feyenoord. Yeah, mine is the same, but I move Juve for uh, <laughs> sports. That, 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 that would be beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Then, then, then I'll actually have something to look forward to. Yeah, and when it gets to the quarterfin- semifinal stage, you'll talk about the third competition in Europe, the Conference League, which like, still exists. And Who is actually really- still in that one? <laughs> Uh, it, there, there, there are a bunch of really good teams there. There's, are West Ham still in it? Yeah, West Ham are still in it. They got a tie in Belgium uh, against Genk. Actually, a Belgian team is doing really well this year. Um, and the Lex are still in it. They're playing against AZ Alkma. They got a win in, in Hall. They got a win in, at home in Belgium. Fiorentina are in it. They're playing at home against Lex Bosman. Oh, nice nice. and Basel are also in it. So. Uh, Italian teams are really doing well this year. Yeah, Italian teams, they're, they're doing the best, actually, in U.S. competitions. So it might be squeaky bum time for Spain and Germany if they don't catch up. <laughs> yeah, because Germany, too, like, Spain has been the disappointment this year, but Germany has been equally as big as you disappointed because they had eight teams <laughs> to start this. Yeah. So, yeah, and with that, it's, we have to say goodbye to our listeners. We hope you enjoyed our La Liga coverage, our Europe coverage and look for another brilliant week uh this podcast might be taking a break for an extended period of time as i will be on vacation but we'll be back after the copa del rey final yay Mm -hmm. yay and with that adios